Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce you to the laws of logarithms. And so for this video to make sense, it's going to be useful if you're already familiar with the basics of what a logarithm is. And so if you're not, I'll link the video I've made on that in the video description. So you can go and watch that video, then come back and see this one afterwards. Now I'm going to go through three different laws in this video and I'll timestamp each one below so you can just skip through to whichever law you want to see. And the first one we're going to look at is called the product rule. Now I'm going to show you where these laws come from and so to do that I'm going to have to very quickly define a couple things. So firstly we're going to say we have a number c and if we raise it to the power of x then it equals another number we'll call a. And if I take that same number c but this time raise it to the power of y then we're going to say this equals a number b. Okay, so that's what we're going to start with. Now, using our knowledge of logarithms, how could we rewrite these equations? Well, we could say that the logarithm of a base c is equal to x, and the logarithm of b base c is equal to y. Okay, because all that just says is, what do I put c to the power of to give me a? Well, c to the power of x equals a. That's what that statement is saying. So finally, we just need to say that, well, c has to be strictly greater than zero because we want our logarithm to be defined. And we also want c not to be equal to one because if c was equal to one, we'd have one to the power of x is equal to a and also one to the power of y is equal to b. But one to the power of anything is just one, but a and b are different numbers. And so it doesn't really make sense because that would then mean that a was equal to b, which we don't want. And finally, we have that a and b are greater than zero. And so now we've done that, we can go on to show the product rule. And so we use the product rule if we have a logarithm of say a multiplied by b, so we have the product of things to a base say c. And this is a really powerful thing because it allows us to turn the product of things into an addition of things, okay? And so let's start off by saying, well, a is equal to c to the power of x and b is equal to c to the power of y. So let's start off by making that substitution. So we've now got the logarithm base c of c to the power of x multiplied by c to the power of y. Let's now use our knowledge of indices because if we've got c to the power of x multiplied by c to the power of y, then that's just gonna be equal to c to the power of x plus y. That's pretty easy. Now, what is this logarithm statement saying? It's saying, what do I put c to the power of to give me c to the power of x plus y? Well, that's easy. That's just gonna be equal to x plus y. So this here is x plus y. And at the start, we said that x was equal to the logarithm of a base c, and y was equal to the logarithm of b base c. So let's again make that final substitution. And so we get that the logarithm of a base c plus the logarithm of b base c is equal to the logarithm of a multiplied by b to a base c. And this here, I'll put it in a box, this here is called the product rule, okay? And it's a really useful thing to know, okay? So that is the product rule. Let's now look at a different one, which is called the quotient rule. This is our second law, okay? And this is slightly different because rather than taking the product of things in our logarithm, we're gonna take the quotient, okay? So I'm gonna take the logarithm base C of A divided by B, okay? And this quotient rule allows me to turn this division into a subtraction. So again, we're gonna work in a similar way. I'm gonna say that a is equal to c to the power of x and b is equal to c to the power of y. So we've got the logarithm base c of c to the power of x divided by c to the power of y. And using our knowledge of indices, well, if I've got c to the power of x divided by c to the power of y, then that's equal to c to the power of x subtract y. So this is the logarithm of c or base c of c to the power of x subtract y. And once again, this statement says, what do I put c to the power of to give me c to the power of x subtract y? Well, that's easy. That's just gonna equal x subtract y. And again, we said x was equal to the logarithm of a base c, y is equal to the logarithm of b base c. So this equals the logarithm of a base c subtract the logarithm of b base c. And that's equal to the logarithm of a divided by b base c. And this here, again, I'll put it in a red box, is called our quotient rule. Okay, so again, pretty easy. The final one we're gonna look at is called the power rule, okay? And we use this if we have something like the logarithm base C of say A to the power of P, okay? And it allows us to move the power to the front of the logarithm. And so how does this work? Well, I'm gonna make the substitution. So I'm gonna let A now be C to the power of X. So we've got the logarithm base C of C to the power of X all to the power of P 
using my knowledge of indices once again, we get that this is equal to the logarithm base c of c to the power of xp. And like usual, this says, well, what do I put c to the power of to give me c to the power of xp? Well, obviously just xp. We said at the start, x was equal to the logarithm of a to a base c. So let's write that in. We've got this is equal to the logarithm base c of a multiplied by p. And you'll usually see it written like this. It's equal to p multiplied by the logarithm of a to a base c. Okay, and let's bring this bit down again and put it in a red box. And so this here is our power rule. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share. And go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. You can also go over to my website now, uh, jacksmaths.co.uk, where I've got all my videos kind of laid out in a nice, easy format to look at. Thanks for watching.